G'day Ziggy D here, and today in Starfield, let's dive into the game's seedy underbelly. Contraband, smuggling, drug running, and theft. Let's talk about theft first. It's easy like taking creds from a baby. Find something that isn't nailed down, bend down to tie your shoelace, wait till no one's looking, and then yoink everything that you can. If you get caught, it's a bounty, a trip to jail, and confiscation of all stolen goods, so don't get caught. At least one skill point in the stealth skill gives you a stealth bar so that you can tell if anyone's looking or not. Highly recommended if you plan on pinching everything that you can get your hands on. Now most honest merchants won't buy stolen goods, but there are plenty of dishonest ones, so chat up the shopkeepers and make note of any that are a bit shifty seeming, because you and they are going to become good friends. Thankfully, the trade authority is as crooked as they come, and they'll buy anything under the counter, and they don't ask too many questions. You just have to sell to them directly in person, and not through their automated kiosks. You can also pickpocket credits and items, but that's pretty risky unless you have magical time traveling abilities. Now theft is all well and good, and you can get a lot of useful items and make some good credits, but let's move on to something spicier. While exploring, I've run into quite a few pirate and pirate-adjacent smuggling operations. And while I'm no pirate, I'm hardly going to leave all of those valuable contraband items just lying around. Some kid could stumble across them. Much better that they get deposited somewhere that will fatten my cred stick. So now, similar to stolen goods, contraband cannot just be sold anywhere. However, while you can carry around stolen items risk-free so long as you don't get caught committing any crimes directly, Contraband is different. It's far riskier to actually just carry it around, as in civilized space you'll be scanned frequently specifically looking for contraband. And if you're caught with it, it's bounties, arrest, confiscation, and destruction. Whenever I find contraband, I jump into one of my outposts where I store it away from prying eyes, middle of nowhere on some barren rock type deal. You can see contraband comes in different flavors from the drug Aurora to mech parts, sentient AI adapters, cult propaganda, and so on. It tends to be a bit heavy, but really high credit value. That said, without any skill points in commerce, expect to only get 10% of its value as per normal when you sell other items. Still, it's good money even then. It's actually pretty easy to miss this stuff when looting as well, so keep an eye out especially for any little protective suitcases as that's often the good stuff. And keep an eye out for the little yellow contraband symbol. And make sure you don't forget and keep this in your ship or inventory. Store it or smuggle it and sell it ASAP. Now as I'd stockpiled a lot of contraband, I decided it was time to get to work on offloading it for some credits. I had been holding out, kind of wondering if there might be better connections further on down the line, like how there are some people that pay premium for certain items. And there may well be some better location to sell certain contraband further on down the line, but for now the simple answer is to sell contraband to who, whomever is willing to buy it. And for that, we do need to get planet side with the contraband without getting caught in the scanners. So I headed to the Red Mile, an upstanding establishment out in lawless space, to visit the portmaster there. Here I was able to buy and equip some shielded cargo holds. So long as you have shielded cargo capacity, you can smuggle contraband within that capacity with the chance of evading scans. It's not guaranteed, there's always a risk. But that's the price of the business. If you get scanned and flagged with contraband, it's a bounty right away and they'll try and stop you to confiscate the cargo. Now you obviously don't want that, so you can just jump away and go somewhere else to pay off your bounty at one of the terminals. It'll cost you a bit, but honestly it'll be a small amount compared to what you might be able to make when you sell off your cargo, so it can be worth it to do. Of course, if you do pass the scan, then you can land and get to the money making. Now here's the catch. Crooked vendors who buy contraband only have so much cash at one time, so you might have to make a few stops if you have a lot of cargo like I do. Making more connections is key to giving you more options. On Mars, I like to visit my old buddy Dennis at the UC Exchange. He doesn't get much stock, so he's pretty willing to get creative with his sources. Unfortunately, he doesn't have a ton of cash. I also like to hit up the Trade Authority across the way there too, of course, they'll buy anything. Over onto the bright lights of Neon City, the Trade Authority there will also buy anything you have. And New Atlantis on Jemison is a pretty clean city, at least on the surface. But down in the well, where they hide their undesirables, is the Trade Authority officers who are more than happy to do some dodgy deals. Now at this point, visiting those various options, I had started to squeeze them dry of credits and I still had a bit of contraband to try and offload. Now I could be patient, but I decided to try and make another connection in Neon City. 
The Strikers are an old Neon City gang who has fallen from their prime with the growth of their rivals, the Disciples. They're kind of desperate for new members, so I get an introduction and an in to join. All I have to do is knock off a few of the Disciples and steal some info. That's pretty easy stuff. Doing so is enough to get a pretty cool outfit and access to their fence, Hatchet, who is happy to buy contraband. So that's another option we have on the books. I end up cleaning out some of their merch I want and selling off the rest of my contraband to cover the costs. Don't forget that that's always an option, even if the vendor runs out of credits, you can always buy things you need like various aid items and ammo, stock up on that sort of stuff and then trade the contraband for it. So if you decide to dip into smuggling, get out there and make those seedy connections. Sometimes shopkeeps will just tell you that they're dodgy outright. Many of them are pretty happy to operate in plain sight. But sometimes you need to run a small errand or do a favour, these things can go a long way to getting people to trust you. The more options you have, the more you can sell, and I'm sure there's more options out there than what I've discovered so far. My smuggling efforts for the day ended up making something like 40,000 credits and a bunch of supplies and gear, pretty solid all around. Now while I was on Neon City making friends, I ended up discovering how to make the contraband and highly controlled drug Aurora. Now this is side quest spoiler territory, so turn off now if you want to avoid that. So entering Neon City, I came across Nashar getting pinched for trying to get Aurora out of the city. This is a pretty nice warning about how controlled the drug is, but it's also a potential way for you to get into the industry yourself. I track Nashar down in jail and find out that he was working for Yannick over at Legrand's Liquors. Yannick strikes me as kind of small time, but, but I figure I can learn who the real players are through him and use him as a stepping stone. If you're here for blend. I just had a new batch come in last night. He advertises his own drink called Blend that the locals all seem to be hooked on. With my medicine skills and, well, basically all the context in the world, it's super obvious that the secret ingredient is, of course, the famous Aurora, so I just straight out call him out on it. Now, Benjamin Bayou controls the Aurora trade, but Yannick wants me to take over smuggling it out to him to make Blend for a cut of the profits. I want to see how the sausage is made, so I agree. So with Yannick's trust gained, he lets me know that he's low on Aurora and that to get more, I need to get inside Xeno Fresh Fisheries. It turns out that the precursor to Aurora is Chasm Base Fish Oil and Xeno Fresh has sole license to fish and process Aurora. So we adopt a fake identity and lie our asses off about our credentials to get a job there. It actually turns out to be pretty easy because they're pretty desperate anyway for anyone who has some basic chemistry knowledge. You know remedial chemistry and seem to be living and breathing? You're goddamn hired. I'm quickly sped downstairs in a protective suit and given some on-the-job training in cooking Aurora. We even get to earn a few extra credits in the process. After our shift ends, we meet with Yannick's contact in the break room and arrange a drop easy peasy. I'll give you the cords to the... Merchandise. Unsurprisingly though, Mr. Bayou knows what's up and calls in on Yannick. Yannick, Yannick, Yannick. Did you think you could use Aurora in my city without me knowing? In the end though, he's a businessman and he agrees to let Yannick continue to steal Aurora from underneath him for a big cut of the profits. That's just good business. With things squared away, kind of, we can essentially do more runs for Yannick now to earn more credits. And we're in on the Aurora trade. In the process of this, a fun side effect is that we learn the formula for Aurora and can make it whenever and wherever we want, opening up some interesting smuggling options in the future potentially. The only problem, and there's a little bit of a catch here, is that it requires Chasm Base oil, and so far that only seems to be available from the Chasm Base on Voli, and as an ocean planet, you can't land anywhere except at Neon City. You can steal some Chasm Base oil maybe, and that's a good start, but more reliable sources are a bit tricky to find. You can buy some chasm base oil on the planet, but that heavily cuts into or even completely wipes out your profit, so no real deal there. I did come up with a somewhat time consuming but creative option, a bit of gun fishing on the down low right down on the water's edge, but it's a bit hard to do and again pretty limited. Basically the chasm base that have come up to the surface and that's it. It's possible that there are some other options waiting to be discovered. We'll have to see what we can find and whether it's possible to start our own Aurora Empire somewhere down the line. For now though, we'll just have to continue to be a little bit opportunistic. Now this is by no means all of the crime that can be done, but it's a tasty little sample for you. We haven't even touched on space piracy after all. But I hope you enjoyed this look at some of the dodgy ways to earn credits in Starfield. That's it for now, I'm Ziggy D, and thanks for watching.